Let's find the domain and the range of two functions f and g as well as the composite functions f of g and g of f. And in this case f of x is 3x squared minus x and g of x is 1 over x. Now how do we do this? Let's start with f. So what I put into f is of course the domain of f. The x values that go into f. Now what are we allowed to put into f? Let's have a look. f is 3x squared minus x. It's a quadratic and therefore a parabola when we graph it. Now I can put anything into a parabola. There's absolutely no limitation. That means that the domain of f is going to be r, all real numbers. Now what do I get if I put all real numbers into f? Now I won't get everything. There will be a limitation because we're dealing with a parabola. Now the parabola is 3x squared minus x. The 3 is the factor we've got in front of the x squared and that determines the shape of the parabola. Determines if it's open to the top or to the bottom. And in this case it's open to the top. So it'll look like this. It'll come from there and go up there. Now we don't really know where we're intersecting the axes and we also don't really know where the minimum is. And of course there will be a minimum. To find this minimum well, what could we do? We could complete this square. So we could look at 3x squared minus x. We would probably really want to factorize 3 and we get 3 times x squared minus a third x. And in the next step we would then complete the square. We would take x squared minus, well we really want 2 times x. What's missing here? 1 6. So I'm dividing the 1 third by 2 and I get 1 6 plus 1 6 squared and of course I have to subtract 1 6 squared because I can't just add something without taking it away. 3 times, well this is going to be x minus 1 6 squared and that'll take care of all of this here. And What's left here is minus 1 6 squared. If I now multiply this out, I get 3x minus 1 6 squared minus, what's this, 1 6 squared is 1 over 36, multiplied by 3 is 1 over 12. So this means that we've got a minimum at 1 6 and negative 1 12. So we know that we've got a minimum at 1 6 and negative 1 12, so maybe somewhere here. And this is going to be sufficient for us because we know that's the lowest point. That means that we get y values, or f of x values, if this is x and this is f of x, starting from this value down here, which is negative 1 12 and going up to infinity. So that means our range is negative 1 12 including negative 1 12 up to infinity. All right, this is f, the domain of f and the range of f. Let's look at g. What can we put into g? Well, we can't really divide by 0, but otherwise we can divide by any number. So that means that the domain of g is going to be r, all real numbers, but we'll take out 0. Now if we put all of these values into g, what do we get? And for that, it helps if you can picture what g looks like. g is this hyperbola. So the values we get out of this are of course all values, infinity down to 0, not including 0, and all values, not including 0, down to negative infinity. So the range of g is actually the same as its domain, its r, excluding 0. Now we've got domain and range for f and for g. We're interested in f of g and g of f. Let's look at f of g first. And f of g of x is of course the same as f of g of x written in this way. So the first thing we're doing is we're putting x into g. Now what were we allowed to put into g? According to what we've done already, we can put anything in there apart from zero. 
what do we get out? Well, anything apart from zero. Now the next step is to put this into f. If we put anything apart from zero into f, well, let's check first. Are we allowed to do this? Anything apart from zero. Now f takes anything. Of course we're fine. We can put anything apart from zero in there. And this means that we don't have to reduce our domain any further. This means that the domain of f of g is actually r without zero, or real numbers excluding zero. Now, what is going to be the range of f of g? If we put in all the real numbers apart from zero, that means we're not putting in zero, but we could have put in zero. That means what we get out might be a bit limited, because zero is not in there. But let's have a look at the graph. Now, if we don't put in zero, we don't put in this value here, we won't get in out that one here. But that value here is actually already included here. So we won't have any limitation by taking out the zero. It means that our range is going to be one twelfth up to infinity without limitation compared to the range of f. All right, in the next step, let's have a look at g of f. g of f of x is, of course, g of f of x. It can be written like this. So that means we're putting x values into f first. Now, we're allowed to put anything into f, and what we get is this interval. We've already look at, looked at this before. Now, in the next step, we want to put f into g. If I put all of these values into g, well, first of all, let's check if we're allowed to do this. Now, we're allowed to put in any value apart from zero. We're actually putting in zero here. So that's not good. We really need to take out zero. Now, if we take out zero, if f of x can't be zero, we also need to take out the values of x that made f of x zero. What are these values? So where is f of x equal to zero? Now, f of x is 3x squared minus x. If I factorize this, I get x times 3x minus 1. And that means that f of x is going to be 0 for x equal to 0 or for x equal to a third. Now, these are the values we can't actually have for x. Otherwise, f of x gets 0. That has to be put into g. And we're not allowed to put 0 into g. So we have to remove 0 and a third from the domain. So this then is going to be the domain of the composite of these two functions. Now, what is the range of g of f? Now let's have a look. What happens if we put these values into g? For that, it probably helps to look at the graph of g. Now, we're only putting in values from negative 1 twelfths to infinity excluding 0, meaning from negative 1 twelfths, let's say that sits here, up to 0, from negative 1 twelfths to 0 but not including 0. So we get these values here, starting with this one and going down to negative infinity. And we're also getting all the values from the positive branch here. So we get 0 to infinity. Now, we need to find out what this point is here. So what we should do is substitute negative 1 twelfths into g. And of course, that will give us negative 12. So that is the largest value we get, and then it goes down. So that means our range is going to be negative infinity up to negative 12, including negative 12, union with 0 to infinity. So what we get from the left branch and what we get from the right branch. And this is the range of g of f of x.